Did you have the prettiest crop of squash last year that you've ever seen, only to walk outside one morning and find all your vines dead? Who's, who's in charge of that, Angela? It's a pretty crushing experience because it, it does happen overnight, or it feels like it's happening it overnight. Does, yeah. And it's the squash vine borer. Yes. And this is a moth, kind of a brightly colored moth, uh -huh. that visits the garden and lays her eggs. She's not a pest herself, but she brings the pests with I her. I gotcha. And um, they look like golden BBs. They're usually laid on the bottom of the leaf, but occasionally you'll find them on top. But when those hatch, they find their way to the stem, right. low on the stem, they bore their way in, and what happens is as they're chewing their way into the stem to make to feed themselves and to make their habitat, right. the vine dies and crashes. And it, it's not really overnight, but it feels like it to the gardener. Right, because most people don't actually see the signs. They don't right. really know what to Until look for. Until they see for. the wilting. Exactly. So one thing to look for is regularly inspect your foliage right. for the little golden BBs, which are the eggs. Right. And just tear that away or remove that leaf. Yeah, you know, squash leaves are fairly large. Right. And if you see that little cluster, you can literally just tear that little cluster out and, and dispose of it. Uh, if you're really in a bad mood, you can just squish them right there in the spot. <laughs> um, but it, it doesn't harm the leaf itself. Sure. It's just you, you're going to play like a leaf cutter bee. And then the other sign that you could look for when you walk through and, and kind of closely inspect your stems is an area that looks like it's been entered into or chewed and then right. you see it's like wet sawdust it the does. debris exactly that's there exactly like wet sawdust and it's at, it's going to be at the base of the stem of right. the squash that's a sure sign that they're in there so how so what there are a few steps that we can do yeah. to kind of reduce or minimize the damage from this right. guy and one of them is just to keep as the as the the vine grows and your leaves are up higher to keep mounding either uh, the soil complete or compost complete or even pine straw up against that stem right. so it's not so exposed. Yeah, you know, you really should be pruning off the lower leaves of the squash anyway right. as it grows up and that allows you to observe the stem more, more closely. Mm -hmm. And so since they want to lay or go into this, the stem at the very base of it, Mounding up against that is actually good for the plant. It will it will root into it. Right. In fact, if you have minor squash vine borer damage and you know you've killed the squash vine borer in one of the methods we're going to discuss, mm -hmm. um, you can sometimes save a vine by mounding the soil or compost up around it and letting it re-root into that. Okay, perfect. So. We're talking about all squash, too. Right. It seems like patty pan is, is a somewhat less susceptible, but in general, just any of the squash, yes. these guys can be attracted right. to. Now, some of the control methods that we can do uh, are completely organic. Oh, yeah. In fact, that's all, all that we really promote because they right. work the best. Right. So, you know, one of the first ways you can do it when you very first notice the damage, some people, you know, will opt to do what they call surgery on the plant, which is to basically use a razor blade, uh -huh. cut the stem open and try to get that out. But often you can do more damage that way sure. than good. So that's not the best way. Um, you can get one of the uh, syringe, the little right. marinating type syringes, and then our liquid BT. Mm -hmm. Mix that according to directions and actually inject that where you see the damage on the stem and that will often kill the worm that's in there, the larva that's in there. And this product is completely safe. Yes. For absolutely animals and safe. humans. Yes. yes. And it does come, we have it like in a ready to spray. It's really good right. even for the, the hornworms on your tomatoes. It is. And sometimes you can discourage the squash vine borers in the first place if you'll spray this on a regular basis. Say mm -hmm. every week, if you'll just go spray all your stems quickly, sometimes you won't end up with the problem in the first place. But you do need to really stay after it. You can't let that program down. Right, right. And then it also comes in a a, a dust form. Right. It does come in dust, which you can just you know, spritz, spritz right yep. out of the tube. Yep. Sure. Now, another great control is the beneficial nematodes. Right. Which are great for many, many. General it's, pest control in the vegetable garden, for sure. Because yes. anything that has part of its life cycle in the soil, mm -hmm. that's going to help take care of it. Ant larva, yes. flea larva, grub larva. Right. It, it's wonderful. Yes. I... I uh, this in combination with the food complete, I can honestly say I have not had any ants in my landscape at home in years. Right. It does work well for that. It does. 
And so, some people see the word nematode and that kind of scares them because we usually right. hear bad, but over 88% of nematodes are beneficial. So that's what we're adding in. And these will soil. control yeah. the, the harmful ones. Yeah, they really do. They, yeah. they're, they predate on each other. Right. Then another option, especially if you've had a lot of trouble with them or you love squash and you have a lot of squash planted, is you can actually make a slurry, sort of yeah. like a thick, gooey paint. Yeah. Um, using the diatomaceous earth, which is an irritant and, um, and an antifeedant, and just powdered milk, just okay. inexpensive powdered milk. And, you know, we talk about milk paint and the fact that that was used as paint for a long time because it right. hardens when it dries. And so it will withstand several rains. And as long as you're irrigating at the base of the plant, which right. you should be doing anyway, because right. we don't really want to introduce powdery mildew in right. dry squash, <laughs> you can do that and then just use a cheap paintbrush, like the little chip brushes that you get at the store or an old paintbrush. And you can mop that on that lower part of the stem. It'll dry hard. It's, it's white, so they don't recognize it as a plant. Right. And um, and sometimes if you'll if you really have struggles with it, you can use these things in combination. Right. And get a good head start on the squash vine borer. And you you mentioned disguising the stem. Right. You can even do that with some nasturtiums or some some greenery. That up is under there. one good way to do that. Is that it's all about not not. It's, it's just camouflaging. Right. And so it doesn't have to be a marigold specifically. We're not looking for that repellent quality against this particular insect. Right. But just something around that. It keeps bee activity up. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always competition between insects, too. They don't yeah. really like each other very much either. And, um, and, and then it kind of discourages that whole thing where it just doesn't. It's just not recognized as a target plant. Right. So you have lots of options with squash. And I wanted you to touch briefly on the fact that winter squash <laughs> does not mean you grow it in the winter. That's correct. <laughs> squash is a summer-loving plant. They yes. love the sun. They love the warmth. And so what winter squash means is that it's going to form a hard shell mm -hmm. rather than the soft shell like our yellow crookneck squash or our zucchini squashes mm -hmm. where you cannot pierce the shell easily with your thumbnail. Right. And so they store longer over the winter. Some of them will store months over the winter if you wrap them individually. So gotcha. that's the whole point of that. And it does seem that some of those varieties are more resistant to the squash vine borer than others. Mm -hmm. But a really active squash vine borer, they're going to find a place. Yeah. So it's our job to sort of stay on top. And again, it's that thing, too, of inspect your garden on a regular basis. Well, you, you know, that gardener's shadow. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, thank you so much, and don't be discouraged. Plant squash. Mm -hmm.